Legend of Total War here with a new campaign series for Total War Warhammer. So this is an early access build, so I want to say thank you to Creative Assembly for allowing me to play the game a bit early. Also, if you're new to my channel and this is the first time you've watched any of my videos, welcome. But just a bit of an introductory on myself. Um, I'm known for playing on the hardest difficulty, I'm also known for having a bit of a short temper, and I'm also known for swearing quite a bit, more than any of the other Total War YouTubers. So, just, you know, just be warned, F-bombs, S-bombs, they happen, they happen all the time. So if you don't like that kind of stuff, best thing, click away now. But if you don't mind that kind of stuff, then let's get into some rough campaigns. So I'm going to be playing firstly as the Dwarves. Even though I did say I was going to play as the Greenskins um, first off, I am definitely going to play as the Greenskins. But the reason I'm not doing it right now is because I wanted to wait for more of the content to, to show up. So I'll, I'll probably do the Greenskins once the game is released and once all the all the content's actually in it. So I'm going to do the Dwarves first. Now the reason I'm doing the Dwarves is because out of the, um, the, the four available factions, you can see I don't have Chaos yet. Well, they just haven't given us access to Chaos yet. I don't think they've com uh, completely 100% finished it. Um, but it, of course, will be av available on release. Um, the reason I've gone for it is because they don't have any cavalry, so it will make it quite a challenge. In addition to that, I'm going to do a Wenny Wiki campaign, um, which there's no, I don't think there's any achievement for it, any Steam achievement for it on this particular game, but in previous Total Wars, what it means is fighting all battles manually and never losing any of them. Now, I really doubt that I'll be able to win every single battle on Legendary Difficulty on any of these factions um, at this point, because obviously I've only had a few days to practice, but we'll see what happens anyway. Now, you get a choice between two legendary lords. Um, I'm going to go with Thorgrim Grudgebearer because I, I think I prefer this bonus over this one. Now you might think, well, that's 50% upkeep lot, um, reduction for Slayer units. Yeah, but having a look, had a, having had a look at their units, I don't really think I'm going to be getting that many Slayers. I think I'm more likely to be getting a lot of Longbeards and Hammerers. Uh, slayers are really just good for getting rid of, um, you know, big units, and there's other ways to get rid of them. Uh, these guys, however, they're more more versatile, so we're going to go with that. The old world is a crucible of relentless war. presents a chance for the brave to bring about an age of reckoning. I come to the Dwarf High King as a herald of such times, and so I find myself at the King's right hand. My presence is timely. But dire news comes from the south. Greenskins flock to the banner of a cruel war boss. Now, my liege, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, leads a mighty throng from Karazakarak, smashing aside any foes that block our path. Bearer desires to return the Karaz Angor to its former glory. 
Then he must rid his lands of vile greenskins. Those gathering within the shadows of Everpeak are a good start. Alright, so also, if you've got any questions about like what I think about the game, just wait for the review that I'm going to make. It'll come out shortly after release. Karaza Karak is secure, my Lord High King. Faced with your terrible wrath, the Greenskins rout, as is typical of their craven nature. The bloody spears still infest the mountains to the east, setting up their hovels amidst your sacred pillars. Another grudge that must be put right, and soon, for the lords of the other dwarf holes will not tolerate a high king that cannot secure his own realms. To the south, yet more vicious Urki and Groby lay ready to strike at your kin. Seek allies amongst your own folk. There are many grudges to settle here. The world shall be in thrall to the Karaz Angkor once more, and no creature, greenskin or otherwise, shall stand in your way. Alright. So, I'll just go through some of the mechanics um, right now before we, you know, go and fight these pricks. So, Book of Grudges. This is sort of like where all the missions go. Um, with all the other factions, they don't really ma matter too much. If you ignore a mission, not a big deal. But with the Dwarves, it certainly does. Now, each each mission is given a severity. So at the moment, it's three. We've already got an age modifier on it, even though we're on turn one. But so the longer you leave a grudge, the more severe it gets. And as it gets more severe, you start to come into problems. Now, even if you have totally maxed out your severity, it doesn't really make that big of a difference, like minus two public order, minus four leadership. It's not really that much, but, you know, it's certainly, you know, if you want to get rid of it, it's certainly a good thing. So it, w it would be good to prioritize this kind of stuff. Anyway, there's a reward in um, doing the grudges anyway. Um, here we can also see our objectives, so if we want to have a look at long campaign victory. Um, yeah, just, you know, conquer a bunch of regions, make sure that Archeon is pissed off. Now, the Dwarves have the biggest roster of technologies out of all the other factions. So there is a... They, the Way of the Guilds is the civil techs. Way of the Clans is all the military techs. I'm going to be wanting to focus largely on civil techs, because we certainly don't want to have any public order problems. Because we're playing on legendary difficulty, we start off with the same sort of public order problems that we get in Attila. Uh, minus eight public order in all provinces. So we're going to want to get rid of that. Also, there's some there's some good stuff in here. Uh, then there's treasury. One thing about this game, guys, you cannot adjust tax slider. So if you... I, I remember I did this when I first played it uh, a few ba days ago. Looking for the tax slider. How do I adjust the tax? You can't. You can't. Um, it's either on or off. Um, yeah, so you, you can turn it off. Get zero, turn it on. That's 100% tax rate, so... Um, so, for example, this building here, you get 100% of it. Plus, you know, whatever modifiers. So there's the uh, public water modifiers as well. So we've got minus 8 because of legendary difficulty, minus 4 because of taxes. Now here we have Thor, uh, Thorgrim Grudge Bearer. Excuse me, you're going to have to bear with my pronunciations of, of these names. They don't really come naturally to me sometimes. Now, probably one of the, the things I like most about this game is, um, I guess the new advances in regard to characters. Every single character in this can be leveled up to level 30. It takes a very long time for it to do that. Um, legendary Lords are immortal, meaning they can't die. Even if you, you know, keep losing, 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 and get, keep getting them wounded in battle, they will never, ever die. Um, I think they get scarred and stuff like that, but I haven't had a chance to check that out yet because I keep winning. Um, so those are all the different, different chains of uh, techs, or not techs, um, abilities. We'll be going through them throughout the campaign. And then we can also have a look at the uh, the building browser, I suppose. Um, you know, 
in this, you get a building construction slot every time you upgrade the um, the main chain building. Um, you know, we've got the economic type buildings here, providing growth, public order, money, uh, gemstones. Not every um, region can produce gemstones, that's just because we've got this one. Um, military support, you know, blacksmiths, that kind of stuff, and then there's the actual military chain. Now, they've also introduced something very interesting to um, Total War Warhammer, and so far, the only faction that doesn't have this are the um, the vampire accounts, and that's global recruitment. Now, when I first... Oh, hang on, I have to be encamped. Okay, I can put them in there. Send me to vengeance. I can always take them off it. Yes. I'll explain how it works. This, this isn't a tutorial campaign, guys, because the first episode is the first thing I've shown you. you. Um, I've already gone through it. I'll go through it with you guys again. So you have local recruitment here, those are the build slots. You can of course increase them, so for example if I want to recruit three Dwarf Warriors, I can do so. Now global recruitment, if you're out in the open, you're in an enemy territory, you can't access your local recruitment. But if you put yourself in encamp mode, you can access the global recruitment. Now they take twice as long to recruit in global recruitment, but and they, they cost twice as much to recruit as well, same upkeep cost. Um, but you know, it's if you're out in the open, there's no way to get back. This is a, a good way for you to get more troops. It's sort of like mercenaries in a way, except you don't get them instantly. In fact, it takes longer than usual. Now, these three slots here, that's accessible for all of your armies. So, for example, if this guy here was to use up all three slots, and I had another army that wanted to use the, the global recruitment, they can't. So that's how that works. The um. The vampires, they work differently. They can raise the dead, so they actually kind of get mercenaries. They spend a bit more and they get them instantly. But not all regions, you know, can supply dead. Um, Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is kill the bloody spears over here. So we have a look at their army. They've got six units, we've got seven. Alright, let's go kill them. Now, I did say this was going to be a... I'm going to, I'm going to say Veni Vidi Viki. I know it's not really pronounced correctly, but that's what I'm comfortable with. So, what that means is fight every battle manually and um, try not to ever lose. I doubt I'm going to be able to do it without losing because I would say that, that Total War Warhammer is more difficult on Legendary Difficulty than Total War Attila on Legendary Difficulty. But we'll see. Even though, you know, this, this campaign is you know, technically on easy, um, you know, as far as starting position is concerned, um, I still don't think I'm going to be able to... Because I've, I've dealt with the Chaos Hordes before, I know what I'm going to be up against. It's not easy. Alright, so what are we up against here? We've, they've got Arab Boys, Goblin Archers, two Orc Boys, and the Orc Big Guns. And of course, their Lord here. This isn't a legendary Lord. Um, the one thing that we've got extra than them is the Grudge Thrower, but to be honest, the Grudge Thrower is not really going to be that useful in this battle. Now, in order resolve here, it would yield a victory, and it would yield us quite a good victory. So, finding it manually, uh, this is one of the issues that I had with Total War Attila, um, where Finding the battle manually ends up with a worse result a lot of the time than if you had done an auto resolve. It's sort of the same with this. I mean, if you want to get a great result, you kind of need to have more specialist units. Well, at least I do. You need to have more specialist units. All I've got really is a few melee infantry and I've got no cavalry. I can't get cavalry either. All right, so we'll just have to make do. Quarrelers. Now, the orcs are faster than than the dwarves, so we can't try and skirmish them too much. So we're going to have to stand and fight. Now, as for the terrain, I can't say that I'm particularly liking what I'm looking here. I'm too sure where to fight. Here we'll have to do it. I want to spread out a little bit. So these hammerers here... They should be about the same quality as the Orc Biggins. Where are they going to be coming from? Okay, they're coming from the other side there. What are these? Axe Infantry. Uh, and Pickaxe Infantry. These guys suck. They're about, yeah, so it's about the equivalent army, except, you know, we can thin them down a little bit with um, Grudge Throwers. So what I want to do with... What I want to do with these guys. Maybe... I just don't like this area very much. Keep them over here a little bit. So they can shoot into their flanks after the melee engagement begins. Now I want you to be shooting into, of course, the Orc Biggins. You 
can manage to damage them a bit, that would be great. Make it easier for my hammerers to kill them. Or... Whatever. Every time I look at him, I keep thinking he's like riding a car, but he's not. He's actually on a, um... On a chair carried by four dwarves with very long beards. So they're doing pretty well so far. Cool. 17 of them. That'll make a difference. Got our crawlers over here, crossbows shooting into them. I don't need to put them in the control group for this one. It's a small scale battle, I can frankly choose where to the send them. Good, we managed to wreck those goblin archers. Okay, watch you over here. Hammer is charging with this. You over here. Get you in a combat. Yeah, against them. Reasonable melee. Take you back. Ah, crap. Their um, orc boys are much faster now. So what are you doing? Walking or something? Get over here. Stop firing at them. Okay, good. We're shooting into the back of them here, so that works well for us. Now, crossbows aren't instant killers, like in um, Total War Attila. So don't be, don't be expecting, you know, crossbows to just you know, rip through enemy infantry. It just doesn't work that way in this one. How the hammer is doing? They are combat even. Okay, how are you going over here? Seem to be winning for the most part. Okay, good. You've won there. I need your help over here. Let them just let them shoot him. So this game, you can also see how much health the, the unit has in total. Probably gonna get a little bit of crossfire there, but don't worry about it too much. Oh jeez, my hammer is aren't doing too well. Oh, probably because they're fighting too. I think it's important we kill as many of them as possible because, you know, if we don't, we have to fight them again later anyway. And we seem to be winning the battle. I mean, we're taking damage, but we are winning. Now I think you're going to be needed over here. We've got to get rid of these archers. I think they're actually doing quite a bit of damage to us. Those units there, they sh they're gone. They're fucking gone. All right, good. You good over here. That guy over there, yeah. They're going to come back, I think. You come over here. I think I'm going to need you up against this. Jeez. Guys over here broke. Crawlers, get over here. I want you to shoot. Shoot uh, them. Boys are about to run away, that's good. Keep them out of it, or else their all of us the battalion will get wiped out. Alright, I want you to stop now. They're coming into melee, that guy there is shattered. Another thing is because we have no cavalry, we can't run them down. Now in fighting every battle manually, that makes things very difficult, you know, to you know get a real edge on the enemy. I've always said it, that cavalry is one of the keys to campaign victories. Which is going to make um, things a little bit difficult, but that's okay. We're getting a bit wrecked there. If we shatter him, he's, he's probably going to leave. You can see his leadership's going down. Now, leadership's pretty much the same thing as morale. Now, guys, bugger it off. Doesn't matter. 
Maybe shoot at them. And you come over here, try and shoot this guy. Man, he's getting... He's already gonna get wounded. But don't worry, he can't die, but... I don't think I can get him out of there. His speed's 30, but uh, I can't tell what his speed is. I might put him into melee to try and save Thorgrim. Just because, you know, if he gets wounded, he'll be out of the fight for a little while. And these guys have taken no damage, so it'll be alright. I'll tell you what, legendary difficulty of this game is pretty damn tough. Like, as you could, could have seen, we had a little bit of an advantage to begin with. And even though it does look like we're going to win, we didn't win by much. Get Thorgrim out of there. I don't think I want you fighting anymore. Right, we got to resort to shooting him. That'll do a good job, but we, we, I kind of can't be uh, getting into melee with him at the same time, or else they won't shoot properly. So this is probably one of the things that makes the dwarves quite a defensive faction. Because, you know, they don't have much speed. If you don't have much speed in battle, no momentum makes things hard to, you know, do things tactically. Come on, you slow piece of shit. You shoot it as well. I doubt you'll land a hit, but if you do, it could be... Could do a lot of damage. He's probably gonna run away soon. Looks like he's shaken. Okay, he's going after Thorgrim again, which is fine. I reckon we can break him before he gets to him. Now, it might not actually be in our best interest to kill him. Because if we kill him, then we'll get another one. But if not, next time we have to fight him, he'll be very weak. Victory, but that's okay. As long as our battalion's here, at least we didn't lose any battalions, so they can, you know, replenish. They're not gonna come back and hit us during the end turn, there's no way in hell. So we can make a bit of money or we can execute the captives and gain a little bit more leadership. I'm gonna go with uh, execute captives. So it wasn't great that we got a, uh, a Pyrrhic victory, we would have got more experience if we didn't, but Dwarves is definitely not my cup of tea. Alright, so let's see here. I'm gonna go with three Dwarf Warriors, recruit that and then hit for the Pillars of Run gear, whatever it's called. Alright, um, you can also rename characters, except for legendary rules for this. Can't rename them. Alright, uh, what are we gonna build here? Money. Going to need lots and lots of money. Yeah. Also, diplomacy. Let's see what we can do here. So, we're already trading with Barak Var. Not getting a hell of a lot of money out of them, though. Probably because we don't have any goods to sell yet. And what can the Dowie do for you on this Join Confederation. Day? The only faction that can't do any joint confederations um, are uh, vampire accounts. At least that's from what I've seen. And I don't seem to be able to do anything else. I mean, I might be able to get a non-accretion back with these guys. Stands ready. But then that's about it. Alright, let's move on to the next turn. But if I don't do everything that I can, I can't hire any... These guys. Yeah, you, you really can't do much in your first turn. I could build this up, but because um, I want to build it into one of the minor settlements, yeah, I should spend some time to explain why. Any so okay, you can pretty much build anything in any region, but minor settlements can only be built up to level three. So, for example, um, buildings can't exceed the level of of the Karas Karat or of the uh, sorry of the main chain building. So, for example, I can't build this until I've built level 4 Kazakh a Karak in this region. So any anything that's like level 4 or 5 tier cannot be built in a minor settlement. But this, since it can be built up to level 3 in a minor settlement, I don't want to take up a building slot in my major settlement. So I'll be destroying that once I've, you know, got a minor settlement. 
he just buggered off. He may have... Oh no, he's still there. He's trying to ambush us. Alright. So we've gained some more troops and he's gained none. He's taking attrition. Why is that? Because they've got low fightiness, probably. Alright, I want to attack him, which will draw out the garrison. Now, he should be really badly damaged. Now, it's just like Total War Attilo, in which, if you go up against, you know, essentially a captain, killing the captain doesn't really provide any major leadership loss. But if I was to kill this prick, uh, it would cause a mass rout quite easily. But that being said, um, I don't have any cavalry. Still doesn't have any we mark another group. No, he doesn't want to. To battle! Well, too bad. Too fucking bad. I want to. Prick, you're gonna die today. Now, the odds are way in our favor this time. Of course, auto resolve would yield a better result, but we'll fight it manually, of course. Now, I want to keep the troops that are damaged, you know, out of combat. I mean, we, we should have enough here to deal with it, um, obviously, because I want them to keep replenishing. When they're dead, they can't replenish. As in, when they're all dead. Alright, um... Reinforcements coming from over there. <laughs> Plenty of time to kill them. I reckon just using these guys to finish them off will be fine. What are these? Archers. Okay, so put these three in reserve. Use them only if things go to absolute shit. Also, we don't want to use, use him yet, either. So you stay out of this one. I mean, if we kill him, it will, it will make a big difference. Also, you didn't even come close to using all your ammo, so if you can get a hit in on him, that would be great. The chances of him getting it are pretty low, though. And don't forget, on legendary difficulty, you can't see the balance of power bar, nor can you see the map, so... I sometimes have people asking me, why don't you show the map? It's legendary difficulty, can't do that. Oh, we did get him. Nice. Didn't do much damage to him, though. I think you guys should be focusing on so I reckon we can kill him before he gets too close. actually die, he was just wounded. Maybe that's, maybe it's his faction leader or something. So that army, he, he may come back. No. Okay. There's no point chasing after them, we've, we've got no, uh, no, no, got no cavalry, I'll do it. Maybe when we get gyrocopters we can do it, they're pretty fast. So what are we going to be up against here? Goblins, goblins, orc boys, and one of those. It just says his name, but what type of unit is it? I'd say that's orc boys. For the High King. Yeah, they've shattered now. Yeah, good shot there. Doesn't matter. We're still getting quite a few kills. Maybe aim for this here, because there's more of them. Aim for the, you know, tight formations with grudge throwers. Which are pretty much just catapults. Dwarf warriors. Our dwarf warriors here, these three... Hang on. What are you doing? Our three guys here should hopefully be able to beat their five. Especially with quarrelers shooting into them. Plus, they've also lost their um, 
their general, so they should break quite quickly. If we're lucky. And they've been running the whole way here. Side here. Not too sure, I'm gonna just just hold point of fire. Yeah. Goblins absolutely suck, so our dwarf warriors should be able to kick their ass. But of course, it's on legendary difficulty. Don't leave anything to chance. If you can get around their back here and shoot into them, that would be preferable. It'll hit these guys. Yeah, I'm struck by you. Try over here then. Fun time, but it's okay. These guys will be done with them soon. Yeah, I want you to keep shooting them so they don't come back. Just stay close by. I don't want you fighting because you took a lot of damage from last time. He had to abandon these guys. Um, I guess we'll wreck him now. And it, like I said, these units here are shit. They're good in order resolved, of course. Cheap spears. Okay, so now we just take a bit of time to, you know, shoot at them, because it's not going to kill them all. And everyone that gets away, we're just going to have to fight again. Orcs are faster than uh, dwarves. Dwarves are the slowest fucking race there is. Except for bloody zombies. Good, decisive victory this time will mean more experience for Thulgrim. I wonder if that's the end of this army, because there's like... They've already lost two battles, technically, because they withdrew the first time. And they've only got 13 men left. It has been disbanded again, so they're, they're wrecked. So we gain a bit of loot. I really do like how they've, um, you, you gain loot just from winning the battle, even if you don't ransom them off. So we gained a, uh, a feather foe torque here, which is mediocre. It even lets you know it's, you know, common. It goes common, then uncommon, rare, and then unique, I think. So extra leadership would help with, um, with leadership, but... I don't know. The dwarves already have pretty good leadership, so I don't know. So they're dead, dead. Now we need to take the pillars of Grun. Send me whatever. to vengeance. All right, so you get to level up. Uh, I want to have Root Marcher because I do like the additional movement range. We we'll get all the other to stuff war. later as we level up. Destroy them. So that's all we have to fight. Order resolve would be preferable, but like I said, 
we're doing this Veni Vidi Vicky. I know I'm going to get shit on my pronunciation of that, but it just doesn't sound right when I pronounce it Veni Vidi Vici. It just doesn't sound right to me. Um, yeah, which means we have to fight all the battles manually. Alright, let's just leave it to our quarrelers. You guys can stand back. Quarrelers and artillery should be able to handle this. They can't run away this time. If they run away, they're dead. Now, also, from my experience here, sending this guy in to get lots of kills does not increase the amount of experience that he gets. He only gets experience when he wins battles, not from when he kills foes. So you really only use him if you need to if you need to fight. Of course, you know, if he can heal. And also, he's immortal, so even if he gets wounded, whatever. The only way he can die is if we lose the campaign. But that extra battle gives uh, Thorgrim as much experience as the battle we just fought previously, because it's... Um, I don't know the exact values, but Pyrrhic victory will give you a very small amount of experience, close victory a little bit more, decisive victory a bit more than that, heroic victory will give you the most. I think you can get some experience from defeats, but I, I wasn't really paying attention. Actually, I don't even think you can... I don't... But weird to get thousands from when you killed that much. Banner of Swiftness. I don't find banners to be really that useful. Extra speed though for a unit, give that to Thorgrim. Give him to get away if he needs to. Alright, we really don't gain much from looting it, so we'll just occupy it. Yes. Now as as testing it out with the orcs, I've seen lootings of up to thirty thousand, which is certainly a lot. You know, that was from a really big city. Your Dowie have been put to work fixing up the captured city, sire. Yet there are many grudges still to settle. Perfidious manlings and bloodthirsty vampires threaten your kind in the north. And your mountain will never be safe while a single greenskin draws breath. To war! Yeah. Alright then. So, what's this? Ambush at Thundering Falls. This is a quest battle, so we can do that at a time of our choosing. Anyway guys, I think I'll end the video here. So, while the game's in early access, I can really only release about one, max two videos a day. Um, like I said, the green skin campaign will be coming out shortly after release, but maybe even the day of. And um, I'll try and take as much of the feedback that you guys have given me to make it, you know, to improve my content on this particular game, at least for the early stuff. That being said, you know, insults and excessive criticisms are going to be ignored because I just I don't deal with people that are hostile to me. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe. Part two's next, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.